Tonight on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup. We're headed to Wolf Creek, Montana to learn the history of Blacktail Ranch. With plenty of horseback riding, river activities, and a huge cave system dating back to the Ice Age. We have lots to do this week, so let's get started right now. Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup. This week we're visiting Blacktail Ranch in Wolf Creek, Montana. Just at the base of the Continental Divide, this ranch is surrounded by mountains and forests with beautifully sparkling rivers running right through the property. Serving guests over 40 years, Blacktail Ranch has more unique historical features and artifacts than any other ranch we've been to. With the rush for gold and the westward expansion of the railroad, Gustav Riddle came to Montana in 1885 and began to homestead in the Trapper Cabin in the Dearborn River Valley. The youngest boy John continued the family tradition and raised his own son here on the ranch and called him Tag. Tag loved this ranch and spent his time exploring every inch of the property. In 1948, he built six cabins and started his own family outfitting business with his wife and four kids. He lost his wife in 1982, but years later fell in love again and married Sandra Renner, a beautiful and hardworking woman who carries on the ranch traditions to this very day, along with Tag's grandson, Will. Well, Will's family, the Riddles, first came to this valley um, as German immigrants. And first they were in Helena and they came out here and they bought up some squatters rights right here in this section that we're on now. And they just expanded the ranch from there. When you say bought up squatters rights, can you explain what that means? Well, back in the old times, you know, you come into a piece of land and I think you maybe got 20, 40 acres or something and you just squatted. Mm -hmm. And then if you squatted there long enough, you owned it, it was yours. Mm -hmm. And so somebody could come in and buy your squatter rights out. Oh, okay. So in, th in this case, that's exactly what they did. And when did you guys decide to turn it into a dude ranch? We're so glad you did, by the well, way. Well, we are. In the ni early 1980s, when Tag and I first got married, I was he was really big into hunting, and I really wasn't a hunter. And he says, you know, let's do something different. Yeah. So he says, let's make this into a show place for summer people. Mm -hmm. And we said, okay. So we just started building on that. And, and they're all log cabins. I they're mean, all log cabins. They're so authentic and original. I love them. They are. They've been renovated, of course. Yeah. But um, they are the real deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love it. Yeah. It really goes with the atmosphere. Yeah. It's like very oh, conducive to the area. Great, great. So what's over here? This seems like um, some type of workshop or something. What is Originally, that? Originally that was a workshop and then it got so crowded and they had so much stuff in there, we turned it into a museum and we'll take you in there and we'll show oh, it Oh, okay. You. I see you have a lot of pieces from different things um, scattered across the ranch and a lot of stuff is um, actual Indian artifacts, isn't it? Correct. And we're going to see more of those inside the museum here. And here we have the museum. Wow, oh my goodness. Yeah, there's a lot going on in here for sure. Oh, this museum might be one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It's packed to the gills with hundreds of artifacts that were found right here on the ranch property. So back here, this wooden part, this is the original homestead. Oh, where, with the wooden planks? Yep, exactly. And this addition was put in by my grandfather to, you know, that put the museum together, all these artifacts. So he poured uh, these concretes in what? He probably poured them in wood. He probably yeah. poured them and then added another one. Exactly, this whole addition yeah. was put in just so we could get this stuff in here. Man, so all of this stuff has been collected for hundreds of years and just brought here in this particular collection. Some people call it hoarding, but then you organize it and call it a museum, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and this is what it's all about too, is being able to bring guests in here and then give them a background. Like that's why the museum is so special to us anyways, because mm -hmm. it gives people background knowledge about where they are and just how special this place is, this ranch is, and how old and how far back it goes. Later this week, we're gonna visit the enormous cave system that Tag discovered as a kid. But first, Will shares some of the incredible things they found in the cave over the years. A lot of things were right out in the open, and when they first went in there, they found this rock right here. Down on the bottom of the cave, there's a little altar. It's about this high, they and, found this, this? and this rock was sitting there on the top. 
So they go down, go down in there and worship the bear, and then there's a buffalo in the back. Whoa! They found it already, just like that. It was just sitting there on a pile of rocks, just like that, leaned on up. On the top. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, this blows me away. This rock. I mean, what oh, a yeah. what a gift mm -hmm. to go in there and find that. Yeah, like I said, it just it puts everything into perspective. You know, not only are you out here riding horses in God's country, and it's a beautiful valley and whatnot, but mm -hmm. it's old, it's historical, it's spiritual. You know, people for thousands of years have been living and riding through here, so. Yeah. We'd like to share that anyway. Yeah, I'm excited. We're going to do that tomorrow, right? Yep. When we come back, we'll meet the Wranglers and staff and head out into the hills for the ride along the Continental Divide. Don't move a muscle. We'll be right back. Blacktail Ranch in Wolf Creek, Montana is an authentic and simple ranch with a lot of blue sky and plenty of horseback riding trails winding through the hills. It's rainy today, but we're saddled up and we're riding anyways. The ride is on. We came to Montana, so we're gonna ride. Dan Burgraff is the head wrangler and he gets us up and ready to go. We are about to go on our first ride. We got a little weather, so I got this slicker on. Um, I'm with a group from Florida, and they're fantastic. They do cowboy mounted shooting, and uh, we're not gonna see a lot of that this time, but they love this particular ranch because they can come out there, they're already cowboys, and they can be cowboys. They're not told nose to tail. They're told, hey, let's go out and have a good time. The Florida peacemakers compete all over the country, and this week, they're just here to enjoy a little downtime and relaxing week of good food and great views. We do a sport called cowboy mounted shooting, okay. and uh, it's a sport where you run a pattern and you use two 45 revolvers that have black powder blanks. So you have two guns, draw your first gun, shoot your first five targets, which are balloons, put your gun away, get your second gun, shoot your second five targets. It's a timed event, and if you miss a target, of course there's a penalty. You knock over a barrel, there's a penalty. Um, there's probably over 80 different patterns that we uh, have to choose from. You can win year-end awards, buckles, prize money. You gotta have a horse that's tolerant to gunfire. It's a lot of fun, it's adrenaline rush every time. Where are we headed to right now? We're gonna head up to Joe's Mountain, and okay. then we'll kind of go down a the other side and go down jo uh, Johnson's Creek. Johnson's Crick. Creek. All right. Crick. <laughs> you guys ready? Riding the Great Divide is a unique and rare opportunity, afforded to only a few special people who find the right venue to help make it happen. Hey, I'm at work today. I hope you're enjoying your day as much as I am. <laughs> Dan, where have you brought me? This place is amazing. I mean, this backdrop, oh, it's incredible. Yeah. A, lot but, of, a lot of cool views what here. What is this? What is this magical little circle? This is a Native American sundial, and okay. they that's how the natives, they use, it's kind of a native calendar. They uh, were able to tell the winter solstice and summer solstice with this right here with how the sun shined off of it. Really? Now it hit the snow off the rock. So what tribes do you think use this particular sundial up here? There's a lot of different tribes that came up this draw. Mm -hmm. um, the Cree, the Blackfeet, the Salish Kootenai. Wow. Yeah, several different tribes. I'm probably Gosh. missing a few. <laughs> the sun finally makes an appearance at exactly the right time. The golden light fills the valley and suddenly brings everything to life once again. Now that the sun is out, we can go hit the water at the nearby Missouri River. Dan is the tour guide with Wolf Creek Outfitters, and he's taken me out this afternoon to see if we can catch some trout. The rest of the gang is just here to play and enjoy the view. But as usual, I'm determined to catch a fish. Tell me some of your great experiences out here. Like, Well, what's great is taking people who have never done this before and having them catch fish. That's always a yeah. always a great thing, especially children. And I really, I really enjoy that part of it. I used to watch fly fishing on TV and go, I don't get it. 
And then I started coming to these dude ranches and learning. I love fishing and I love the opportunity to sit out here and just be here. Well, dude ranches also, but fishing, fly fishing in general, takes you to some beautiful places you might oh. not otherwise not see. You know? Incredible places in the world. I feel so blessed. Maybe throw that just below them in that seam over there. What's that? And then you kind of throw it into that seam. Okay. Right there? Yep, and then just let it ride for a moment. Okay, and you're sure. doing great. Get that pot up in the air. Oh, it's got a big one. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> a rainbow trout. Oh, we got a rainbow trout. If you hold her closer, she looks bigger. <laughs> Woo! Good Let's catch, try one more time. Dan. Well, it took a while, but we made it happen. And of course, this eagle made it look a lot easier than it really is. Thanks for showing me up, buddy. When we come back, we're going to talk with the ladies in the kitchen and explore the mysteries of the cave. So don't move. We'll be right back, right here on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup. Every ranch we've visited over the last few years have each had a unique quality that separates them from the others, making each one a different experience than before. Blacktail has one of the most striking unique features we've ever seen. This cave system is filled with pictographs, artwork left here by humans hundreds and even thousands of years ago. They don't even know exactly what it all means, but the secrets they have found inside reveal a long and storied history right here on this spot. When my grandpa was younger, they knew about this whole being here, but they always assumed it was a bear den. And every time, you know, if they had the chance to come up here and check it out, they would. And so when my grandpa was little and Dan's grandpa was actually there too, the two of them, or the four of them, they went up there and they were kind of shoving each other in the hole, just seeing who's the bravest, you know, kind of seeing who they could fit in there. And eventually they had all of them, my grandpa being the oldest, he was kind of the bully. He kind of let him in there, you know. They got him to go in there. And uh, once they popped through, it actually turned into a big room in there. And so they realized it wasn't a bear den, but actually something a lot bigger. So they came back with lanterns and were able to explore a lot of it. And then right when we go up in here, right on the top of the stairs, there's pict pictographs. So right before you start walking down, look right in front of you. And those were actually covered up for a long time. There was moss on them. And a guy reached up there and pulled the moss off and it preserved the pictographs. And even further down on uh, Dan's family's ranch are some of the same pictographs and they believe those pictographs have something to do with this cave's location. The group heads up the hill and down into the belly of the beast. Crouch. All right, I'm going. You stand up, you duck, you crouch. Everybody's getting a lesson on how to get in here. Gee. You'll be okay. Can like, you stand up once you get in there? Yes. Okay. Stand straight up. No, if you're claustrophobic, this is not for you. Because <laughs> not knowing what's in on the other side does scare me a little bit. Okay, coming through. Like I said, it's cold, a little bit slimy. This is more rock here, but All right, so it's gonna be really, rough. really cold as you're walking in here. All this was under you know, gla glacier ice at one point, and the glaciers are so thick and large that it creates friction at the bottom, which would melt the ice and turn it into water, and then the water would run through this limestone carving out the walls, creating these caverns. So, I mean, it goes back quite a ways. Will has been a fountain of information about these caverns. His grandfather discovered this cave many years ago, and his fascination for history and stories buried here have remained in the family, passed on now to his grandson. You see where it's all jaggedy up here at the top? This whole roof caved in at some point in history. <laughs> and that's what we're walking on right now. So who knows how many artifacts are underneath our feet that we'll never be able to get to. I mean, they found caribou in this cave. They found, you know, small camel in this cave, small horse. There was a species of bear that is closely related to the sun bear in South America. All, all the animals that were found in this cave were brought in by man too. Nothing crawled down in here. Now we get to share that with people and people from all over the world come here and get to see this and experience that. It's not every day you get to <laughs> come see something like this. No matter how hot or cold it is outside, the temperature inside the cave is always the same. So down here in the cave, we have this under, underwater system. All this running underneath of us, there's water carving still to this day. And depending on the time of year, it's rising and low, you know, receding, depending on the temperature outside. And back in the past, they've had uh, scuba divers go down in this water 
see if they could find other rooms or uh, how far they could go. And the guy, he, he said it was kind of the same thing as the cave right up here. It's you go through small holes and large openings even down under the water. So still no, still no end down there either. And you can smell and you can feel like in this cave, it's not a, a stagnant air. It's kind of fresh, right? You can have a bonfire down in here and that's how they were able to see and have light and people lived in here, you know. And this, it stays 42 degrees year round. So this is actually a comfortable living compared to whatever was going on outside. <laughs> Even the dog is interested in exploring the depths of the cave system and all it has to offer. Uh, oh, there you go. Dan, where are we going? Are we going back in here or we're going to stay right here? Second story. Oh gosh. The altar, I don't know if Will showed you guys the altar in the museum. Mm -mm. Uh, the Bear Rock, that Buffalo Rock Bear. Oh, that's where you found that rock on the altar? Okay. It's the same rock, same setup. We just put the real one inside the museum in yeah. case someone wanted to come down here and steal it which actually happened, so this is the second replica. <laughs> this small altar was discovered in the cave right at this spot. I'm not sure what they were using it for, but I'm glad it's retired. All right, guys, so right here, this is the altar. And when my grandpa and his buddies first came down in here, this is how it looked. These are the same rocks, this is the same setup. And this bone right here on the top, this is the top skull part of a buffalo. And you can see here, this is the bear. Mm -hmm. And then on the back, there's a buffalo carving. We'll walk around, you guys will be able to see that. I mean, right where we're sitting right now, it's kind of weird to think like, you know, people lived in here, you know? And like, <laughs> the Blackfeet were probably sitting right in here in a circle, you know, somehow, you know, praising the bear or the buffalo before they went out into the flats and actually chased the buffalo and hunted the buffalo. We still have so much to explore, so don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to take a ride to a remote cabin on the Continental Divide, right here on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup. There are so many different ways to have fun here at Blacktail Ranch in Montana. The rivers and streams that flow through the property are absolutely beautiful and you could spend an entire day swimming or just having a nice picnic in this tall grass. Today, we're gonna to take a ride to a remote cabin for our final night on the ranch. But first, I just wanna stop by the kitchen and thank these lovely ladies for all the outstanding meals we have enjoyed during our time here. Hey, we're in Blacktail Kitchen. This ranch has produced the most unbelievable food. If you think you're gonna to come to a dude ranch and lose weight, you're absolutely wrong. In here is Jody and Verna, and these ladies, they have their own cookbook. This is where the magic happens. You have been producing some unbelievable food, everything from the main course to the dessert. So tell me a little bit about your love for cooking and why you got into this business. My love for cooking started when I started here 30 years ago. Wow. I've been working here for 30 years. We're lucky to have you. Yes, and I'm lucky to have them. It's yeah. like a family working here. Yes. Everybody gets along. We just produce great food because we have a passion for it. Yeah. <laughs> now this is so watery. All right. Mm. It's so delicious. Thanks for letting me sneak in early. You're welcome. Enjoy that. I love that everyone here has a special affection for this ranch and for Sandra and her family. And as part of ranch tradition, I get to put up my very own horseshoe on the wall of honor and leave my mark on this place the same way it's left a mark on me. I am going to let you add to our Horseshoe Hall of Fame. Okay. Which is we have all our guests, hopefully, um, will come in and take a horseshoe, put it on the wall where they like, and make you know their comments, sign it, let us okay. know that they've been here. Right. And then we can look back at that and have great memories with them. Fantastic. And remembering them, and they can remember us. So we're going to put your horseshoe, Debbie, right here. Is this okay up here? That's perfect. Okay, move your hand. Yeah. Everything needs a little tightening up. And we're going to let... What color would you like? We have blue or black. These are our options. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. And I'll take the hammer. I'm going to tell you, Sandra, we have had such a great time and how kind you are and the oh. hospitality and the crew, your staff has just been unbelievable. So thank you from the bottom of our well, hearts you for are, making us family. It's been nice. Well, you are family. Thank and you. thank you so much because it means the world to us. 
Because well, that's what we do. And we appreciate it. Oh, we had a great time. You're welcome. Well, it's been a great having you guys. And we hope you all come back maybe for a dude ranch yeah. vacation. Yeah. Maybe for just actually a little vacation. There you go. All right. There. There Perfect. we go. Thank you. You're welcome, sweetie. Oh, Thank man. you. So much fun. Yeah. It's been great having you. It's been wonderful to be here. So relaxing. Yeah. Well, that's what we're about, right? Come unplug, reconnect with yourself mostly. Yeah. And, you know, enjoy the Blacktail Ranch. All right. Come on. Okay. Before we get too mushy. Yeah. For our final adventure, we take a ride to the remote cabin and enjoy some music, food, and friendship with an incredible view. Watch out. The dogs did a lot of work this week too, including a few special tricks. So they've earned a little special treat as well. So for the rest of the afternoon, I think I'm gonna get my feet wet, maybe build a dam or two, Chat it up with the ladies. This is just a great way to wrap up our trip. <laughs> I really enjoyed my time here with Sandra and Will. It's taught me so much about family and love and warmth and welcoming, which is really the backbone of most dude ranches that I've been to. I feel so blessed to have come to this ranch along with many others. But the experience I had with Sandra and Will just reminds me, the backbone and the heart of dude ranching is hospitality and love. And I felt that here. And I cannot wait to come back again. Hey everybody, we need to sing happy birthday to Ms. Debbie because it is her birthday today. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for this week. There's really no other way you want to spend your birthday. Waking up here and having an amazing breakfast. Thanks to all of you for letting me share my day with you and your vacation with me. I appreciate it. That's going to do it for us this week. Until next week, go out, appreciate each other, appreciate yourself, and thank you for watching. When you're ready to book your Dude Ranch vacation, visit our website for more information. And don't forget to tell them you saw it right here on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup. You're not even a good skipping rock. No. Let's get a good one. This is a good skipping rock. This is the kind of rock. Four. You didn't see it, but it was four. Teen.